So the other day I was sitting around just staring at my modular waiting for something to happen. I wonder if I can use brains and pressure points as a kind of dirty oscillator. Yeah, you can use it as an oscillator, but I wasn't prepared uh, for the, the level of awesomeness. It turns out that it's really very nice and it actually has uh, pretty good tracking and, uh, and some very interesting uh, wave shaping capabilities. But I haven't seen any um, documentation or video, so I thought I'd shoot this very impromptu video uh, to just give you guys an, an idea of what it's capable of. Okay, um, I'm just going to use the Borg in VCA mode because I like it. And uh, I just have that patched into the A138 here, basically just to attenuate the signal a little bit. First thing, obviously, is to, you know, give brains a really fast clock from somewhere. So for now, we'll just get some self-cycling action on maths. The most obvious thing to do is to just take really any of these gate um, outputs. <laughs> So that's pretty, um, pretty vanilla, uh, but I want to demonstrate the, how good the tracking is. If you clock it from a VCO, like say VCO1 from the uh, MFB triple VCO, So kind of the next thing to do would be to use one of the tuned voltage outputs, say from uh, like channel 3 here. And so initially with um, all of the voltages down at zero, of course you're not going to get anything. If I put the first one up to maximum, okay, now I have a tone. But what I can essentially do here is create a pulse wave with varying widths. So right now this is, you can kind of visualize it here. This is narrow pulse and then a lot of zero. Uh, now I've, I've doubled the, uh, the size of the pulse. And it's, of course, continuously um, sweepable. Because you have control actually over the amplitude of each of these steps of your pulse wave, you can get a kind of crude, you know, stepped approximation of, for instance, a triangle wave. Now if we were to put the Borg into filtering mode here, I think you have a pretty convincing um, oscillator. Where it really gets interesting though is with um, wave shaping. You have these three inputs, the, the reset input, the run input, and the uh, direction input. And these are like three dedicated modulation inputs for our oscillator. Um, so the, the first one, reset, is actually um, maybe one of, the, one of the more interesting ones. Uh, and I'm just going to clock it from another VCO, just VCO2 in the, in the triple VCO bank here. So if you think about what this is doing, is actually it's, it's like a kind of hard sink. Right, it's resetting um, our waveform at some arbitrary rate as determined by, you know, what, what you're clocking it with. But it's, it's, kind, of a sh it's kind of a shitty sink. Uh, there are really weird um, aliasing problems. Um, and I don't know if you can see this on the video, but interestingly, we're now affecting the duty cycle of these LEDs. What about the run input? Well, this is 
uh, you know, going to start and stop our waveform from cycling. So it's actually kind of inserting um, silences into our waveform. And this um, actually ends up playing kind of like a dedicated um, amplitude modulation input. <laughs> And then there's the direction input, which is like, um, well, I don't really know what the fuck it's like. It's, it's, it's completely insane, because if you think about what this is doing now, is it's like reversing the direction that we traverse through our pulse wave. like some weird modem, almost ring modulated kind of sound. And then of course, you know, use all three of them at once, maybe run it through maths as a, patched up as a wave shaper. Um, you can get some really cool stuff out of this. I want to thank Tony at Make Noise for just creating really awesome stuff.